Hello, this is Emma Berry. One of the really popular features in TDN last year was the excellent column by Pat Smullen, the former multiple champion jockey in Ireland. Pat gave us great insight on the racing action throughout the season, and of course this year there hasn't really been much action to speak of at all so far. But with racing almost under orders to resume in Britain and Ireland, I caught up with Pat to have a chat about all that we have to look forward to in some action-packed weeks to come. Hi Pat, great to, uh, great to hear you. Hope you're... Uh... Keeping keeping yourself well occupied during during lockdown. How are, how are things out there with you? Yeah, hi Emma. Um, yeah, so no, look, I mean, I, I must admit, uh, my life hasn't changed a great deal with uh, with, with all the restrictions. And um, luckily, we we have the farm here and it's kept us busy and entertained. And we've always found something to do every day. But uh, I suppose the biggest uh, the biggest you know thing that's missing out of our lives is is actually racing and uh, that that's something I found very difficult to to sort of live without. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's been it's been strange for us all, isn't it? We sort of have a pattern of getting up and being involved with the horses in the morning, whether it's riding out or mucking out or whatever, and then uh, you know, we're either going racing or watching racing. So not having that for a prolonged period was was uh, quite disconcerting really, wasn't it? Very much so, you know. Like obviously, you know, I think I think a lot of us are creatures of habit, and you know, as you say, when you attend to uh, daily daily chores early in the morning, uh, you know, that the next thing was to sit down and go through the race card of the upcoming racing on the day, and go through the farm, and even even with me not riding, I, I still tend to do that and look at uh, at the the upcoming racing, and uh, not having that was quite strange. And, uh, it's a big part of your day and listen, but um, hopefully that will change in the in the very near future. Absolutely, and I imagine you've probably been in contact with some of your uh, former weighing room colleagues, and uh, I imagine they're very frustrated as well with the situation. So we had a situation, particularly in Ireland, where you had a short period of racing behind closed doors, so they had a taste of of what it could be like, and then suddenly everything was taken away from us. I mean, what's the what's the mood like generally about the idea of Obviously, everyone, I guess, is excited about getting back to racing, but we're getting, getting back to a very different way of racing, aren't we? Yeah, I think uh, overall, I think everybody is just, you know, from a jockey's perspective, speaking to a lot of my friends and, co- you know, past colleagues, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're just desperate to get back racing. I mean, it's going to be totally different to what it has ever been before. But I think we, we were lucky here in Ireland that we got... To, to sort of sample or trial or whatever way you want to put it, 10, ten race days behind closed doors. So, you know, that, 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 that structure is there and in place. So, and I think we have a little bit of an advantage that way that they, they, they have got to do that and experience it and, and, uh, and everybody knows the, the protocols. So, uh, they're pretty much ready to go again, but, uh, obviously racing behind closed doors with no atmosphere and no, no attendance there. It's uh, it's quite different. The, boy, the the lads were telling me, and uh, as you'd expect, was uh, at this point, I think uh, you know everybody's just desperate to get back racing and uh, whatever form that is in. Absolutely, and I mean, you know, obviously, everyone's safety is paramount, um, and you know, it's particularly important with jockeys because it's, it's a risky sport anyway. Um, and you know, one where you're pretty closely bunched often in in races. I've seen in France since they started. Everyone's riding in masks. I don't know if that's going to be the same in Britain and Ireland. I presume it might be. But um, I guess, you know, they've already had protocols in place to have the jockeys all, whether they're changing in their cars or changing different parts of the grandstand, just trying to keep people as, as apart as they can be. Yeah, so, you know, I, I think uh, from what I gather that they will be required to wear masks when when, when uh, racing resumes. Um, but I suppose the, the only thing that, you know, we're lucky in that is, the, you know, the expanse of of a race course that there is a lot of room, a lot of other buildings there, that, you know, that apart from the wear room, so they can spread the jockeys out so that they're not uh, sitting on top of one another. They have already done that in in, in the past, you know, as I said, with those 10 previous meetings uh, behind closed doors. So uh, there is ample space there for for social distancing and for the jockey to prepare and, and get ready for, for, uh, for, for the rides without, uh, you know, coming too close to each other so that's all in place and ready to go so um you know to be fair i think uh we 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 here in ireland are, are pretty ready and as i said that's uh 
that that model is there and in place and everyone has had, had a, a taste of it and knows what's required. So, uh, you know, we're, we're just, we're, we're luckily ready to, ready to resume, uh, hopefully, uh, on the 8th of June. Yes, indeed. And I imagine, um, you know, for the trainers particularly, well, and the and owners as well, but uh, in you know, this time of the year or, you know, even earlier, sort of planning up uh, towards the classic season, it, it's a real progression that we're used to of, you know, building the horses up gradually and then, you know, generally going through trials and up to the classic races. And we're going sort of wham, bam into a real, you know, it's going to be thrilling action, hopefully, to watch um, from the start. But it, it's a very unusual scenario. Um, for most trainers, they'd like to give a prep run before going into these these big races to find out where they're at, I guess. Yes, of course, and see how, how your horse is. You know, you can, yeah, I mean, you can do a certain amount of homework and prepare your horse, but there's no substitute for a run. I know in the past it has become more and more um, common for to, to to go to, let's say, the a Guineas without a prep run, and uh, you know, with the facilities that that uh, all trainers have these days now that, that they can can do that and get horses uh, fit enough for their first run without a prep. But, but in general, everyone likes to see how they get on with their first run and and, and progress from there. So uh, it's totally different, uh, but it's just a totally different year uh, and it's going to be that way till till the end of the season. Now, so hopefully when we do resume, that it's, uh, it's now something that I've never, ever experienced before. So... Everyone's just going to have to be in the same boat and try and get their horses as fit as they possibly can at home uh, and just get them out and get running. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, there's probably going to be an advantage to some trainers that are a little bit harder on their horses at home and will have them fitter than, than others. And, uh, you know, I'm sure the, the other trainers that are happy to have their horses prepared uh, to whatever percentage, maybe 80% fit for their first run. Will will get rewarded as the year goes on. I'm sure those horses will improve as, as the season progresses. So it's a balancing act. It's a, it's to, as I said, it's uh, totally unprecedented the the, the the situation that we're in. But uh, the the one thing is for certain that uh, if there's seven or eight races on a day, there'll be seven or eight winners, and uh, everyone will be happy with that. But uh, as I said, it's um, it, it's a case of uh, just getting back and getting getting horses out and getting getting them running now. Yes, indeed. And I mean, you know, even with three year olds, um, if we're talking about the classic year, there's you know, they're still very young horses and through the season, you know, this is still a very early time of the year. We see we see horses progress all the time and I mean, this is far from ideal what we're dealing with, but at the same time I guess it may give opportunities to horses that have needed a little bit of bit more time and perhaps not being pushed as much as they'd have had to have been in the past and uh, you know, we're not you know, it, there are benefits to to an unfortunate situation, I would imagine. No question, you know. There's going to be obviously, uh, you know, there's going to be the guineas run as, as a, obviously the, the later date uh, in June as opposed to in May, and that 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 month or six weeks is there is going to be uh, beneficial to some as it, uh, rather than others, you know. So the the more precocious uh, three year olds that would have been sharp and ready from a uh, uh, you know, quite a, an, an active two-year-old career would have had an advantage uh, in in early May, but uh, now now the pendulum is going to swing in favour of the later maturing horse. But just that's just the situation that it is, and uh, as I said, it's going to benefit some and and not others. But uh, but equally, you know, I, I still think the principles will all um, pitch up to, for, for their various different targets, and uh, and I'm sure they'll be in rude health and uh, and. Uh, you know, it will still still be there. The, the principles will be there to, uh, fighting it out. I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, as as we've said, uh, you know, three-year-olds uh, can take some time to come in hand. You know, and often haven't had that much racing as two-year-olds. Or they've won the one horse. I'm sure we're all really looking forward to seeing this this year and to see what uh, what he can continue to do is Pinatubo. And of course, we've seen that he had plenty of racing last year and progressed and progressed. He's, you know, one of the most exciting horses we've seen for a long time. What would your hopes be for him this year? Are you, are you, a, are you a yes or a no man? I know that's pretty much. Oh, very, 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 very much a yes man, you know. And I, I, my opinion of him hasn't changed just because we're, we're racing, you know, we're not going to see him for, you know, a, a delayed period of maybe six weeks, you know. So I don't think he's going to 
uh, disimprove or, or uh, a whole lot in, in that period of time. So, uh, you know, he was of the highest quality, extremely high rating from last year, uh, was, you know, hugely impressive in all his starts. And, uh, and you know, I, I read that he's been away from home and has had a, a couple of race course gallops. So uh, it was certainly one in chance, chance for today. So uh, he's going to be prepared and ready for, for, for uh whenever the Guineas is, is scheduled to run. And, um, you know, as I said, in my opinion, as what I said at the, at the back end of last year, he, he is still the one that everybody else has to improve uh, to beat. And uh, so, you know, there's great, great reports from Arizona that he's working extremely well uh, as well, from what I gather. But um, uh, at the end of the day, Pinatubo, is the, he's the, he has the, the most solid form in the, in the book. And... Uh, in my opinion, he's the one that they all have to beat, even though it's a delayed uh, return. Yeah, absolutely. Are there any other horses that really caught your eye last year that you're particularly looking forward to seeing back in action this season? Uh, you know, there's various uh, other horses. I mean, on a personal level, there's uh, a filly of my players. There's um, the Dermot Wellsane, Anna Grace. has got an extremely good pedigree, Galileo filly. that was impressive in her maiden win at Leopardstown on... Uh, at the back end of last year, and uh, we'll be hopeful that she she will return at uh, you know at a very decent level. So, um, you know, so I'm looking forward to her. And uh, but uh, Pinatubo is the standout. But as I said, Arizona is another horse that uh, I'll be looking really looking forward to seeing. And um, and and I amongst others, but they're they're just a few. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this time last year, we were all at the, almost about to be at the Cara for the sort of grand opening on Guineas weekend with the t-shirt Leo Varadka there and the Aga Khan and, uh, you know, great crowds and very exciting new race course development. And obviously this year we're, we're in a situation where probably most of us won't actually be seeing a race, for, race course for quite a while unless we're leading up a runner. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess really the, the, the thing is, having having that action back on, and um, HRI, of course, have had to um, had to you know, deal with government when the government has a, an awful lot else on their on their plate as well. And have, I, I guess you know done an awfully good job getting getting things back going and getting agreement on uh, you know on what's now an earlier date than some had feared. Yeah, look, I mean, there was uh, some, some criticism of HRI, which um, I'm sure was you know I, I feel a little bit unfair is that. You know, they were dictated to by government. And, uh, you know, while we all in the industry feel that, you know, race is extremely important, and which it is to us and, uh, but, uh, and as a contributor to the economy, but uh, uh, the importance of horse racing resuming was a long way down the list of, uh, of priorities for the government. So um, you didn't have to understand that, that you know, the, uh, the powers that be at HRI were, were very much dictated to and, and were waiting on instruction from the government. So I think it's very unfair to criticise uh, HRI for lack of um, uh, of communication or, or, or action because until their hands were tied, there was very little they could actually do. Um, that, that said, you know, there is a little bit of uh, unease amongst the, the general uh, trainers in general, really, uh, at the present time is that we have had uh, confirmation of a return date of the 8th of June and uh, which is almost a week ago now since the confirmation that that is the return date and uh, we still have no programme uh, uh, published and uh, I think that is um, definitely causing a lot of uh, uh, anxiety amongst trainers and frustration and uh, so I think HRI that is something I know it's easier said than done there's a lot of work that has to be put in to, to pull it together but uh, I, I do feel that um, that now they need to, to really get, get get it out there and publish because trainers, as I said, have been extremely frustrated and they're creatures of habits of pro, uh, planning and plotting and uh, making uh, arrangements for their horses. And, uh, you know, so having no programme has, has been uh, quite frustrating for them. So the sooner that is published, the better. And then everyone can, uh, you know, trainers can reassure their owners that they're, there is a, a certain uh, target that they're all aiming for with their horses. Yes, absolutely. I know whatever level of horse you're training, it, it's good to have an aim. And, you know, through all of this, the, you know, the owners of the horses generally have all been incredibly patient. Most owners of horses in training, you know, we all know how 
expensive that is. So it's nice to be able to yeah. start to look at a program and think, oh, yes, I could, you know, even if I can't actually go, but my horse could be going here on a certain day. It's all about exactly, dreaming. Exactly, yeah. And as you say, it's very important, to, regardless of whether it's, a, you know, a, a, a pattern performer or a, a low rated handicapper, it's, it's irrelevant, really. Owners are paying bills and, uh, and, and as you said, have been extremely understanding and patient in the, in the last, Two and a half months, and uh, when there is, you know, no, there didn't seem to be any light at the end of the tunnel for a period there. Uh, they, they, they've continued to pay training fees and keep, uh, you know, various different tra- trainers, businesses going, and in turn, uh, that has kept a lot of people in jobs. So that you know, the owner has been uh, vital cog as they as they are in, in racing at, at any given time, but uh, especially in this most difficult time that we've had. Uh, have really kept the kept the whole thing going. So um, I think it's only fair that now that the, you know we have a, a resumption date, and that that's a, it's only fair that uh, everybody can can get the you know the trainers can reassure them uh, that those owners of, of uh, specific targets for their horses. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you've touched on this before a couple of times actually in, in your TDN column last year. Um, about how important it is for racing to kind of really show people what goes on behind the scenes. You know, so much of the work is done at home and on the gallops, and there's an awful lot of care and welfare that goes into these horses. And I think, to me, it seemed, if there's, again, if there's an upside to a, a really unusual situation, it's been that trainers have really upped their game, and people associated with stables and stud farms have really upped their game in kind of putting out through social media and through their own websites and videos um, what's going on behind the scenes? Because there's been no action on the track, but the horses are still in work. There's still a lot of work happening. Um, have you particularly enjoyed seeing, you know, some of the stuff that's been out there on social media? Is there anyone? Well, it's, 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 it's everything that I, ta- you know, that we spoke about before that I'd hoped would uh, would happen. And uh, and I really think that everyone, and I'm not saying that it's because I, I, I <laughs> mentioned it, but uh, people have really seemed to have t- to taken to that idea and. And have really sold the sport in uh, in a very very positive way. Uh, what Jamie Osborne has been doing is nothing short of extraordinary. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, it's hugely entertaining, but it uh, it just shows the camaraderie that's in the yard uh, between among staff in a very difficult period. Of t- uh, it, it, you know, it, I think it's been just quite amazing, and uh, and I think just it shows the. You know the, the the enjoyment that's there in walking in a race is stable and uh, and highlights how well uh, cared for all both uh, the the staff and obviously the horses are and uh, you know it's been not an only short of uh, spectacular really the, the stuff he's been putting up and uh, and I think he should be seriously commended for it and I, and I'm sure he'll be repaid with a lot of. Uh, New owners, I'm sure, in the in the future, because if I was to put a horse in training, uh, a new owner entering into the into the game there, uh, and, and have watched that, so you'd be looking, you'd be putting Jamie Osborne to the top of your list for entertainment. So yeah, uh, you know, it's it's been really really good, and and another account that has been uh, really uh, informative is the thoroughbred tales that uh, that uh, Sally Ann Graphic has uh, set up and. Uh, and you know, as the, the, the various different people take up the account, and and they've showed all different aspects of the of the industry from breeding and, and racing, and uh, that that has been uh, very very positive in my opinion. Yes, absolutely. No, Eddie Harty was good on there a few weeks ago, and uh, I think the host at the moment is Johnny Hassett to the Bloodstock Connection, showing his breeze up horses, and and, and yeah. uh, Brendan Holland's been putting a lot a lot out through his social media on on what goes into the breeze up. Side of the yeah, and I, and I think that that's been very, very informative, and uh, you know Johnny Hassett has been doing an excellent job, and uh, you know, so it, yeah, no, I think it's just been uh, very, very positive uh, everything that, and uh, you know, it just goes into the time that, that 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 various trainers and different people have had on their hands because of no racing, they've used it to uh, to to the full full advantage and uh, sold the, the sport and the industry in a very, very positive way, which is. Uh, can be not only beneficial to to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And how's your bloodstock empire at home? Have you got some nice bowls this year? Yeah, well, we 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 took a very uh, <laughs> well, it was a clever decision about to buy a few bowls to pinhook uh, uh, at the at the back end of last year. So we've uh, we 
two that we bought and four that uh, and two that we uh, bred. So we have four yearlings to sell this year. So uh, that's going to be uh, t- t- timing hasn't been brilliant. I think, I think it's going to be very difficult to sell horses this year. But um, but no, thankfully we have those and uh, we, we've uh, two, two mares, two brood mares with two foals at, at first. And uh, so we, we've had a. a you know, it, it, it was, I found it very, very uh, beneficial to have the, the farm and the, the few horses to to um, to take care of, and it's kept us uh, immune to the to this uh, difficult period. Brilliant. Well, it sounds like you've got plenty to keep you occupied, and soon we'll be back glued to British and Irish racing, God willing, before too long. So uh, I think we can all look forward to that. Exactly, and uh, the sooner the better, because as I said, it's. Uh, you know, the, the, at the end of the day, I think it's only we've all realised now that the whole, you know, the whole industry at the end of the day revolves up around horse racing, and if we don't have racing, everything suffers. So, um, uh, you know, so as I said, the, the sooner we have racing back, the better, and uh, uh, really looking forward to to um, viewing some uh, hopefully I'd say re- really good uh, action in, in the coming months. Absolutely, no. That's uh, that's certainly uh, certainly we've got a feast of racing through June by the look of it. So uh, let's hope everything goes to plan. Yeah. Well, no, it's been great to talk to you, Pat. As always, thank you very much. And uh, no, hopefully we'll be able to see you before too long. Not at all, Emma. It's my pleasure. And yeah, uh, so, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, be able to get together soon on a race track. Whether that's going to be a little bit down the down the road, but uh, at least we'll have uh, racing on our TVs very soon. Hopefully.